Welcome to Fuel Your Mind, a web series dealing with all things diesel. Today we'll be talking about injector systems. Welcome back to Fuel Your Mind. Last time we talked about DPFs and how they work. We also covered the different types of regions and the potential problems involved. This time, we're gonna talk about another problem area of your engine. Thankfully, I have somebody to help me out with it. I'm joined by Tom Perini, a mechanic. How long have you been a mechanic? Uh, a little over 40 years. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So, okay. I know that fuel injectors put fuel into the combustion chamber. Can you walk me through, well, everything? The injectors are built to inject a precise amount of fuel into the cylinder at the right time to give you the most power that you can get. There are several different types of injectors out there. Um, the early design were mechanical. They ran off of a, a push rod, a camshaft. Um, they had a low fuel pressure and the fuel pressure ran through the cylinder head on most of them and when the camshaft opened up through the push rod, it would push down on the injector and it would squirt fuel in the cylinder. Mm -hmm. That was used in semis for years and years. Um, Huey injectors came along, which is a hydraulic electric unit injector. Um, they came out, uh, Caterpillar I believe made those in um, about 93, 94 era. Okay. And those had a uh, oil that ran through them, a high pressure oil. Uh, they had also the oil pressure opened them. There was no camshaft involved. It had a high pressure pump and the high pressure pump created 2,000, 3,000 pounds of pressure. And it was always, the high pressure oil was always in the injector and the computer told the injector when to fire. There was a solenoid on top and there was fuel in it. So you had oil, fuel, and electric, and they were all computer controlled. Uh, the fuel had, oh, I would say there's a small portion of the fuel in the bottom of the injector, and you had the oil that come in on the top and pushed down on a cup that pressed down with several thousand pounds pressure, and that created a high pressure spray that atomized on top of your pistons, and it created a real good, a real good burn rate, fairly clean, and it made good power. Um, that was the second design. The last one that we're mostly seeing now is a common rail. And a common rail has your fuel comes up from your tank through a CP3, CP4 pump. And that pump creates pressure itself. It pumps it over to a rail system that has the injector lines that go off of it that feeds the injectors that have. Um, there's sensors on the rail also. So you have like a high pressure sensor and a low pressure sensor. Too high pressure, it sends fuel back to the tank. And it just kind of controls the injector pressures to give it the most best atomized fuel for the conditions that you're driving. It's also what they're using to meet emissions nowadays is the uh, common rail. You'll find that I think 2008 up in the Fords. Uh, Six sevens, the Duramax has been using it for years. Cummins is using it in the Dodges. And that's the best one out there right now, we think. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's for emissions and sure. power. All right, that's fantastic. So I hear you saying that the common rail system is pretty much foolproof. Mm -hmm. I love it. That sounds great. I am in the market for a new truck. Is there any reason why I should go back and look for a truck with one of the other two systems. Is there any benefit to that for me? No, you would be going backwards in technology. Um, you won't hardly find anything that's gonna be real reliable in the older mechanical systems. Uh, if you're gonna be hot shotting, like I think you said you wanted to, mm -hmm. you want something newer that will give you better fuel mileage and good power. The Huey system was very particular on uh, oil, clean oil. If you don't have clean oil to your high pressure pump, you have thousands of dollars for repairs. Hmm. So I would 
stick to the common rail. Sounds good to me. Uh, is there anything else that I really need to keep in mind when looking for my new truck? Now, if you're gonna buy a used one, a used common rail, test drive it, look out your mirrors when you're driving, put a little bit of a load on it, make sure your exhaust is clear, clean, there's no smoke coming out of it. That way you know it hasn't been tampered with or anything. Tom, thank you so much. I really appreciate the information. No problem, good luck in finding the truck. Thank you. <laughs> and now, the engine segment. The 6.0 Power Stroke. This engine has, well, a bad reputation for being poorly made and even rushed into production. In fact, this engine encountered so many issues that in January of 2007, Ford sued Navistar over it. Produced from 2003 to 2007, they were run in the Ford Super Duty F-Series from 03 to 07. They get 325 horsepower and 560 to 570 pound-foot. Decent power, and they do get adequate fuel mileage for similar trucks. A quick run-through of some common problems in the 6.0 liter begins with EGR, exhaust problems that can also include turbocharger issues. The head gasket is also known to blow at fairly low mileage depending on how the engine is tuned. As low as 22,000 miles on a performance tuned truck. Another common issue is a bad FICAM or fuel injection control module. When this goes bad, your truck will suffer from rough starts or even not be able to start at all. One of the most expensive problems with these engines are the Huey systems. The injectors were known to blow regularly, costing an average of $3,000 to $5,000 to replace. One of the reasons this system appears to work so poorly is because of how complicated it is and how many different things can go wrong. Hueys run off of oil, fuel, and electricity, three totally separate systems which have to be checked if something goes wrong. Hueys also operate at ridiculously high pressures. Anything that goes wrong is magnified by the pressure and heat. The list of problems that this truck has shies people away from it. But in reality, with proper maintenance and attention, this truck can last a long time, providing the user with plenty of power and reliability for towing. There are differences in opinions on whether it is better to hot rod or modify a 6.0 and whether modifications improve or harm reliability. The bottom line is, with enough love and a little luck, this engine will see you through. Next week, we will look at the older version of the 6.0 and share a tip for how to properly maintain Huey injectors. Let's recap. Today we learned that injectors put fuel into the combustion chamber. We also learned that there are three main types of injectors. Mechanical, which is just fuel. Full electrical, which is known as the common rail system, and then the Huey, or hydraulic electric unit injector. The Huey uses both fuel and electricity. It is a hydraulically controlled and electronically activated system. Well, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining us again on Fuel Your Mind, and please come back next time. And remember, if you ever have any questions or any ideas on topics that you'd like us to cover, please just send us an email. Thanks again and see you next time on Fuel Your Mind. <laughs>